Hello everyone. In this particular video lecture, we would like to uh, we would like to find out that what is the nature of flux distribution along the air gap periphery of a DC machine. So, for finding the nature of flux distribution along the air gap periphery for a DC machine, uh, we are uh, here shown the developed view. Actually, first we have taken the cross-sectional view of a two-pole DC machine and after taking the cross-sectional view of two-pole DC machine, we have taken the developed view. That means, the DC machine is assumed to be cut out and laid out flat like this. So, this is the developed view of a two-pole DC machine. First, we have taken the cross-sectional view and after taking the cross-sectional view, we have drawn the developed view of two-pole DC machine. As usual, I would like to say that we are taking here number of poles to be 2 so as to avoid any kind of confusion or ambiguity between electrical degree and mechanical degree. Now, for uh, analysis purpose, I have assumed the DC machine to be working as a generator. That means I have assumed generating mode of operation. However, for motoring mode of operation also, the things can can be drawn like this although in that case the cross and dot for the armature conductor has to reverse if we are taking the machine to be operating as motor. Okay, allow me to uh, proceed with the uh, steps which are needed to find the nature of flux distribution in the air gap at loaded condition for a DC machine. So for that purpose I am assuming generating action and further I am assuming that the armature core, the armature core is moving in this direction which is shown by the arrow. That means the armature core is assumed to move from left side to the right side, from left to right. Now, this pole is written as south pole, this pole is written as north pole. This is because by right hand grip rule you will be able to find that the lines of flux are leaving this pole face. So, this is termed as north pole and the lines of flux are found to enter into this pole face so it is termed as south pole you see these these circles which are shown on the side portion of the south pole these circles and these circles which are shown on the side of the north pole these circles are nothing but field coils so these field coils are carrying current so they are carrying current in such a way that current is entering the field coils through this portion and it is completing its path from behind the board and it is again leaving the board on this side of the coil. That means what? This was uh, taken to be the cross sectional view. So that means what? You can assume that there is a field windings which is in this manner. That means it is uh, leaving the board from this side and it is again entering the board this side. So, you can imagine or rather it is the thing that field coils are leaving the board and it is entering the board here. So, you just think that on the right hand side of the south pole the field coils are leaving the board and on the left hand side of the south pole the field coils are entering the board and of obviously the whole thing is getting returned from the back of the board. So, if you apply this right hand grip rule where we have to only ensure that the right hand four fingers will be moved along the direction of current. So, when we are moving this right hand fingers along the direction of current, we have to only ensure that the nails, the nails of the four fingers should be directed in the direction of current. So, you see on this side of the pole, the conductor are indicated by cross. That means what current is entering the field coils here. So, earlier, sometime earlier I was talking about the field windings of coils. Mind you, I have not said anything regarding the current which is carried by the field coils or I have not said anything regarding the direction of current carried by the field coils. So, this cross and dot actually indicates, this cross and dot in the circle here indicates the direction of current through the field coils. So, cross means what? Current is entering into the board. So, my right hand four fingers 
is entering into the wood from behind it is coming out dot means coming out so you see thumb is pointing towards the pole face like this thumb is pointing towards the pole face so thumb actually indicates the direction of magnetic lines of flux so lines of flux are entering this pole face so since lines of flux are entering this pole face this will be south pole in a similar manner you can find that if you apply right hand grip rule cross means what current is entering into the board dot means leaving so thumb is uh, pointing away right hand thumb if you apply that right hand rule in this way cross means current is entering and dot means leaving the thumb is pointing away from the north pole face so here lines of flux are leaving the north pole face so this will be your north pole because lines of flux are leaving this pole face and here lines of flux are entering this pole face so this will be termed as south pole now this is the nature of flux distribution in the air gap due to current carried by the field poles actually these field poles are also termed, are also sometimes known as main field pole because in a dc machine we have seen that for improving the commutation we have to place interpoles also so that's why in order to distinguish these poles from interpoles the term main field pole is also in wide use that means these poles are also known by the name of main field pole just to distinguish it from the interpole so interpoles will be placed somewhat here along the interpolar region or along the geometric neutral axis but these south and north pole are the main field pole so due to the main field pole the flux distribution along the air gap periphery that means if a if an observer moves along the air gap periphery and if he goes on measuring the uh, strength of the flux in the air gap periphery and if it is being plotted along the y axis the flux strength the flux strength is plotted along y axis and along x axis we are plotting the the space angle theta that means the space angle theta is sometimes defined as the angle of a point or rather space angle theta is the angular distance of a point from some reference axis so you may choose the brush axis or the interpolar axis or the geometric neutral axis as the reference axis so from reference axis how many degrees are away you so that angle theta which is known by the space angle theta will let you know the position of the point because for each particular point along the air gap periphery you can always associate an angle an angle or rather you can always associate that how much angular distance away that particular point is from a reference axis so we can plot the value of the flux along the air gap periphery in the y axis and space angle theta along the x axis so space angle is nothing but it is a means of determining or locating a point uniquely uniquely by a value of angle theta and for measuring this angle theta we have to choose some reference axis so simply we proceed in that way now while plotting this flux distribution it is assumed that this flux distribution is being plotted at no load condition so that point should be kept in mind that this thing is plotted at no load condition this is plotted at no load that means armature current is zero so actually i should have indicated the armature conductors over this surface because this is your armature core this is nothing but this is your armature core so i should have indicated the conductors along here like you see here i have seven conductors on the south pole so this is one conductor two Three, four, five, six, seven. So these are the armature conductors. Likewise, there will be armature conductors here. One, two, three. One, two, three. So you see here. Although I am indicating the armature conductors in the armature core under south pole and uh, under north pole, you will find that dot and cross is not indicated. Why we are not indicating the dot and cross? because this thing is drawn for no load condition loading is not there so armature current is zero so since armature current is zero that's why armature conductors are neither shown any dot or cross here 
Now look at this diagram. In this particular diagram, you will notice that the field coils which are placed along the field poles, these field coils are shown to be carrying no current. You see, neither dot or cross, neither cross or dot is indicated in these field coils. That means IF is zero. So keeping that thing in mind, what is done? We have plotted the magnetic lines of flux due to current carried by the armature conductors. So this particular situation is not real situation or practical situation. This is totally hypothetical situation, but we cannot help because you see, if you want to find the nature of flux distribution in air gap at loaded condition, then you have to add up, you have to superpose the ordinates of flux due to field current and flux due to armature current and then you can arrive at the nature of the flux distribution in DC machine for loaded condition. So for that reason what has to be done first we will plot the field flux assuming armature current is zero then we will plot the armature flux assuming field current is zero. So that's why we are indicating here field current to be zero and armature current is uh, dot and cross under the south pole it is shown by dot and under the north pole it is shown by cross so this is in accordance with Fleming's right hand rule since in the beginning itself I have told that we are taking generating action so you see what is the direction of motion it is from left to right so thumb will be in the direction from left to right so direction of motion right hand thumb is aligned so right hand thumb is aligned along the direction of motion that is from left to right what about this index finger of the right hand index finger of the right hand should be along the magnetic lines of flux so under south pole under south pole lines of flux are entering the pole face so thumb uh, so the index finger of the right hand is also pointing towards the pole face of the south pole so now these two being aligned index finger of right hand along the lines of flux direction for south pole it is entering the pole face so so the index finger is pointing towards the pole face thumb is in the direction of motion that is from left to right so the middle finger will let you know the right hand the right hand middle finger will let you know the induced emf polarity for these conductors which are placed under south pole so it is pointing out of the board middle finger is pointing out of the board that's why these are dot obviously you can apply the fleming's right hand rule for this north pole there will be one change that for lines of flux if you consider the lines of flux under north pole they are leaving the pole face so the index finger of the right hand should point away from the pole face and at the same time thumb should point in the direction of motion that is from left to right so in that situation you will find that the middle finger is pointing into the board that's why it is cross now after saying this this green colored waveform is the waveform of armature MMF. This green color waveform is the waveform of armature MMF. So while uh, deriving the nature of space distribution of MMF due to armature winding in a DC machine, we have uh, found that the nature of space distribution of MMF for armature winding in a DC machine is triangular in nature and the peak of the waveform or the peak of the triangle is usually occurring along the interpolar region or the interpolar axis so it is having its peak along the interpolar axis here also it is having the peak along the interpolar axis or the brush axis and we have also seen while learning that nature of space distribution of armature MMF in DC machine we have also learned that the armature MMF is zero under the pole center you see this is south pole and this green dotted line is representing the center of the south pole face likewise this green dotted line this green dotted line this green dotted line represents the center of the north pole face so under the center of the pole faces armature mmf should be zero so that's what you see that this green color line which is indicating the armature mmf it is passing through zero along the pole centers along the pole centers okay now this red color waveform is nothing but the distribution of armature flux that means first we have plotted the armature MMF distribution and after plotting the armature MMF distribution that is the distribution of armature magnetomotive force 
we will plot the distribution of armature flux so all of us know that armature flux or in general magnetic flux is given by magnetomotive force that is mmf divided by reluctance so if you divide the armature mmf by the reluctance by the reluctance you will find that you have obtained the flux so mmf by reluctance is nothing but the magnetic flux so this red line represents the distribution of armature flux and armature flux can be obtained by by dividing the armature mmf by reluctance now one thing might uh, trouble us is that along the interpolar region although the armature mmf is at its peak value but the armature flux is showing to have a value which is very less or rather you can see there is a dip there is a fall in the value of armature flux along the interpolar region this can be easily explained if you take into account the air gap length which is there along the interpolar axis you can you have seen the cross sectional view of dc machine so if you look at the cross sectional view of dc machine you will find that along the interpolar region there is a huge air gap that means very large re reluctance so this large reluctance which is provided by huge air gap along the interpolar axis is responsible for the dip or the fall in the armature flux in spite of the fact that armature mmf is peak but since the reluctance is very high along the interpolar axis there is a dip or fall in the armature flux now what about this portion where it is changing linearly you see here under the pole phase under the pole phase the air gap is uniform so reluctance is uniform so magnetic flux will follow the nature of armature mmf because what is flux flux is mmf by reluctance now if reluctance is constant then nature of mmf and flux will become same so only in this portion mind you only in this portion that means portion under the south pole phase portion under the south pole phase we will see that under the portion of the south pole phase the air gap between armature core and the south pole phase is more or less uniform so in this part that is between 1 and 1 dash between 1 and 1 dash under the south pole phase air gap is uniform so that's why the flux will follow the armature mmf waveform but once you are moving away from the pole phase the air gap increases sharply you see this is the air gap na this is this portion is the yoke i guess you remember this this portion is the yoke this is the yoke portion although it is not visible that much so this portion is the yoke so you see along this portion air gap length increases drastically to a high value so that's why the armature flux reduces although the armature mmf is more look here although the armature mmf is more but armature flux is reducing because the air gap length is increasing drastically this is the armature core and this is the yoke this portion is the yoke okay so that's why this is the nature of the armature flux now a question may pop up that uh, on what basis this is shown positive and this is shown negative likewise you can think on what basis the armature mmf is shown to be in this way i mean to say it could have been the mirror image mirror image means it might have happened that armature mmf is starting from here peak crossing zero negative peak again crossing zero again positive peak so i am showing negative peak at this point and i am showing positive peak at this point but the reverse could have been also true that means negative peak would have been occurring here and positive peak would have been occurring here so that depends on our assumption that which thing you are going to treat as positive and which thing you are going to treat as negative so what has been done dot current the armature conductors which are carrying dot current they are taken to be positive so obviously armature conductors which are carrying cross current are taken to be negative so if you take this assumption that armature conductors which are carrying dot current will be treated as positive and armature conductors which are carrying cross current will be treated as negative you will have this kind of thing if you make the reverse assumption that means if you assume 
क्रॉस करेंट टू बी पॉजिटिव एंड डॉट करेंट टू बी नेगेटिव इन दैट केस नेगेटिव पीक वुड बी ऑकरिंग हेयर दैट मीन्स एट दिस पॉइंट एंड एट द सेम टाइम दिस नेगेटिव पीक वुड वुल दिस नेगेटिव पीक वुड नॉट बी हेयर रेदर हेयर वुड हैव द पॉजिटिव पीक हेयर इन केस यू हैव चोजन द रिवर्स कन्वेंशन द सेम थिंग गोज फॉर दिस वन हेयर वॉट इज डन Flux which are entering the south pole, that means the stator. Flux which are entering the stator, as well as which are leaving the rotor, that means armature core, they are taken as positive. So flux which are leaving the stator, that means which are leaving the pole, and which is entering the rotor, that means which is entering the armature core, will be taken as negative. So as per that convention, this plus and minus are coming. Obviously, if you choose the reverse uh, convention, that means if you choose. that flux leaving the stator will be positive and flux entering the stator will be negative in that case this would have become negative and this would have become positive so it just depends on the convention and that will decide whether it is plus or minus but i should reiterate one thing our convention may differ so in that case this plus and minus may differ but as far as the nature of mmf distribution or the nature of flux distribution is there that should not differ that means armature mmf should pass through zero at which portion armature mmf will pass through zero at the pole center only armature mmf will pass through zero at the pole center only and armature mmf will have its peak at the interpolar region only that is geometric neutral axis armature mmf will have its peak along the interpolar region or the geometric neutral axis only of course that peak may be positive or negative depending upon our convention which we have uh, taken or adopted but the nature of the distribution is not going to differ now what i would like to tell you is that you just uh, notice on this thing that uh, i have marked this pole tip as 1 and this pole tip as 1 dash i have marked this pole tip of north pole as 2 and this pole tip of north pole as 2 dash isn't it so the same thing should apply here that means what this pole tip of south pole is 1 so this pole tip of south pole should be termed as 1 dash isn't it so this is 1 dash this pole tip is 1 dash likewise this pole tip of north pole will be termed as 2 and this pole tip will be termed as 2 dash now instead of naming it 1 1 dash and 2 2 dash instead of naming this south pole tip this portion as 1 and south pole tip this portion as 1 dash or instead of naming this north pole tip as 2 and this north pole tip as 2 dash we can equally uh, use another phrase and that is your leading pole tip and trailing pole tip it is very easy to determine which is leading and trailing pole tip what you have to do you have to just move from one brush to the another brush but when you are moving from one brush to the another brush you have to maintain the direction of motion so what is the direction of motion direction of motion is from left to right so you move in this direction only that is from left to right so you are moving from this brush to this brush let's name it name the brush so that it's easy for us to communicate let's say this is your brush b dash and this is our brush b so this will be again brush b dash only because this being the develop view this being the develop view b dash is coming twice why it is coming twice because this being the develop view that means the things uh, the that means what the dc machine is being cut and laid out flat if you wrap it up if you join or if you wrap it up then this b and b dash will coincide so that's why b dash is coming twice now you move from brush b dash to b this pole tip is coming first so this will be leading pole tip this will be trailing pole tip again you move from brush b to b dash so this pole tip is coming first so this is leading pole tip and this is trailing pole tip okay so we can find out in that way which is leading and trailing pole tip now what i ask you is that uh, if you can just zoom it over this portion so it will be easier this portion if you can zoom it this portion this portion thank you so what you can do you just observe the direction of the lines of flux at this pole tip of south pole which pole tip pole tip 1 of south pole but pole tip 1 of south pole can be also named as leading pole tip so what do you see field flux are entering into the pole face what about the armature flux they are 
away from the pole phase. So at the pole tip 1 of south pole, you will find that field flux and armature flux are in opposite direction. So they will cancel at this pole tip. But if you consider pole tip 1 dash, that is the trailing pole tip of south pole. What is pole tip 1 dash? Pole tip 1 dash is nothing but the trailing pole tip of south pole. So at pole tip 1 dash, you see armature flux and field flux are in the same direction. So there they get added. So what we can conclude? You can again zoom in. So what can we conclude? That for generating action, for generating action we can find that there is a subtraction of armature flux and field flux at the leading pole tip and there is an addition of armature flux and field flux at the trailing pole tip. So there is an addition at the trailing pole tip, there is a subtraction at the leading pole tip. Addition of what and subtraction of what? Addition of field flux and armature flux at trailing pole tip, subtraction of field flux and armature flux at leading pole tip. The same thing should happen with the value of flux also. So at this portion of the flux, the armature flux should get subtracted from here because there is a opposition of field flux and armature flux at this pole tip, at pole tip 1 of south pole, which is the leading pole tip of south pole, isn't it? <coughs> so, so what can we say that the field flux and armature flux, they should get subtracted for this half, this half that is to the left side of the south pole that means starting from the center of the south pole to the left of it. But we should keep in mind that at the pole center, at the pole center you see, what do you see at the pole center? That field flux is vertically upwards for south pole phase and armature flux is horizontal. That means what? They do not interact with each other since they are in space quadrature. So you see armature flux has got no effect over the field flux at the pole center and that is what is being corroborated by the armature MMF distribution also. The armature MMF distribution you see it passes through zero value at the pole center. So you see in this case also the value of the flux at no load condition and at loaded condition they are happening to be same at the pole center. You see here if you look at this particular point the green line is the value of the flux distribution under loaded condition and the red line is the flux distribution at no load condition. So if you just focus along the pole center line that is center of the south pole you will find that there is no change in the flux at the pole center both at no load condition as well as at loaded condition. This is because of the fact that armature MMF is passing through zero at the pole center or you can say that field flux and armature flux they are in exact quadrature. Exact quadrature means if you look at this particular lines of flux it is entering the south pole almost vertically and this armature flux is horizontal at the pole center. This armature flux is horizontal at the pole center, isn't it? So that's why you say that it has got no effect along the pole center. So that is what is being reflected here. That at the pole center, the value of the flux is same. Whether you consider no load condition, that is this red curve, or you consider the loaded condition, that is the green curve. Now, after saying this, as I was saying in the beginning, that we cannot see, actually we cannot see magnetic lines of flux. So if we cannot see magnetic lines of flux, how can we plot these lines of flux? The answer is very simple, by applying that right hand grip rule which has been tested experimentally. So these lines of flux or these lines of flux are being plotted by applying this right hand grip rule only. But the thing is that besides plotting this, we don't have any other option. That means we can only think or we can have a visualization that what would be the pattern of the magnetic flux distribution. So that pattern of the magnetic flux distribution can be done or can be carried out by applying 
राइट हैंड ग्रिप रूल और फ्लेमिंग रूल और वट एवर रूल आर एक्सिस्टिंग बट दैट फ्लक्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विल बी ओनली ड्यू टू करेंट कैरिड बाई वन कंडक्टर एट ए टाइम बट वेन द डीसी मशीन विल बी लोडेड बोथ फील्ड वाइंडिंग विल कैरी करेंट एज वेल एज आर्मेचर वाइंडिंग विल कैरी करेंट बट इफ यू नोटिस वाइल प्लॉटिंग द फील्ड फ्लक्स डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन आई हैव एज्यूम आर्मेचर करेंट इज जीरो and while plotting the armature flux distribution i have assumed field current is zero but in a real situation in a actual situation both field winding will carry current as well as the armature winding will carry current so we are interested in knowing the nature of flux distribution along the air gap periphery of a dc machine in this particular case of a dc generator that what will be the what would be the nature of flux distribution in the air gap periphery of a dc generator under loaded condition so when it is loaded the when the dc machine or the dc generator in this particular case is assumed to be loaded in that case it is for sure that field winding will also carry current and armature winding will also carry current so that means what we have to add the ordinates that is the value along y axis we have to add the ordinate that is the value along the y axis for both armature flux and field flux so you see let let this be our armature flux phi a so these are the ordinates these are the ordinates of the armature flux okay these lines these lines are indicating the ordinates of the armature flux okay what about the field flux field flux needs to be also added so this is my field flux of course this field flux is drawn at no load condition that means assuming i a that is armature current is zero but these are the ordinates of the field flux these are the ordinates of the field flux isn't it so we have to add point by point the ordinate of field flux and armature flux so here it is positive but this is negative so they will subtract on this particular portion you see armature flux is also positive and field flux is also positive in this particular portion between center of south pole and pole tip 1 dash between center of south pole and pole tip 1 dash you see field flux is also positive and armature flux is also positive so they get added here this is in accordance with our visualization of armature flux and field flux getting added at the trailing pole tip of south pole that is pole tip 1 dash so now you just add ordinate by ordinate or you add the y axis value then you get this green colored waveform so this green colored waveform is nothing but this green colored waveform which is written as loaded is nothing but the superposition of this field flux waveform and the armature flux waveform so here we are having the armature flux waveform given by this red color so this is the distribution of armature flux and this is the distribution of field flux but of course this distribution of field flux is there at no load condition so we are adding the ordinates of this and this so we are getting the resultant flux distribution in the air gap periphery at loaded condition so when you observe this green colored waveform you will notice one thing what is that that the zero crossing of the waveform has shifted in the direction of motion you see at this brush axis that is the geometric neutral axis you will find that under no load condition under no load condition this was the zero crossing but when it is uh, loaded the zero crossing is shifting to this point that means what there is a shift by how many degrees theta degree there is a shift by theta degree in the direction of rotation this is one effect we have seen what else another thing is very much uh, what should i say it is uh, very much known to us that at the leading pole tip there will be subtraction of field flux and armature flux so it is getting reduced at the leading pole tip at the trailing pole tip they are getting added up field flux and armature flux this is was the trailing pole tip this was the south pole and this was the uh, pole tip 1 dash so pole tip 1 dash is the trailing pole tip of south pole so here also you see that they are getting added up so that's why in this portion the value is getting increased and the same thing can be said for north pole that pole tip 2 dash is the trailing pole tip so here at the trailing pole tip that is pole tip 2 dash pole tip 2 dash of north pole is the trailing pole tip they will get added which will get added field flux 
and armature flux will add it will get added both are negative so the value is increased here okay so now what thing is this uh, shaded portion showing the shaded portion which is shown here by blue color is actually showing the reduction in the flux due to magnetic saturation what i want to say is that this green colored waveform this green color waveform is going to be applicable only if the dc machine is working under magnetically unsaturated condition unsaturated means the magnetic circuit is not saturated this green color waveform which i am again uh, outlining it in the diagram for understanding this green colored waveform is going to be applicable when the dc machine or the dc generator is working under a situation where the magnetic circuit or the iron parts of the dc machine that is your armature core field poles yoke if these are unsaturated that means there is no magnetic saturation occurring in that case this green color waveform is applicable under no magnetic saturation now if you consider the design of dc machine most of the dc machines are designed from the point of view of economy so in that case there is a little bit of compromise on the value of the flux density which should be there in the dc machine under loaded condition or when the dc machine is fully loaded the value of magnetic flux density is somewhat higher so you may take for all practical purpose that there is a magnetic saturation occurring in the iron part of the dc machine when it is working under loaded condition so in that case what happens due to magnetic saturation due to magnetic saturation the increase in the flux density at the trailing pole tip will be lesser compared to the reduction in the flux density at the leading pole tip so what we have seen here that at the leading pole tip there is a reduction in the flux because armature flux and field flux are in opposite direction if you just notice the leading pole tip that is pole tip 1 for south pole and pole tip 2 pole tip 2 for north pole these are the leading pole tips so if you just superpose this direction of field flux and armature flux at the leading pole tip you will find they are opposite so there is a reduction in the uh field flux at the leading pole tip however there is a addition that means there is a increase in the flux at the trailing pole tip so what we say that there is both increase and decrease in the flux increase in flux at the trailing pole tip there is a increase in the flux and at the leading pole tip there is a decrease in the flux but due to this magnetic saturation what happens the amount by which there is a reduction in the flux at the leading pole tip is higher compared to the amount by which there is a increase in flux at the trailing pole tip so the net effect is that there is a reduction in flux due to magnetic saturation so if you consider that in that case this waveform will be applicable this waveform that means instead of going through this portion you have to move through this blue line that means this blue line will then let you know that this is the waveform which will be there under loaded condition and of course we are assuming that there is a magnetic saturation occurring okay so this blue line will then let you know the distribution of flux at loaded condition assuming there is a magnetic saturation occurring in the circuit okay now regarding this uh, shape of the armature flux you can just comment that this shape of the armature flux can you zoom it here this shape of the armature flux is uh, resembling that of a saddle which is placed on a horse back or you can also compare it with the uh, the seat of a bicycle so this kind of shape is known as saddle shape s a d d l e saddle shape so what is the nature of armature flux distribution it is saddle shape at the at the interpolar region s a d d l e saddle saddle shape okay this is the nature okay so let it be up to this thank you